First up is San Juan, Puerto Rico. Cream. Passion fruit, they use passion fruit juice. You can ask for pineapple juice, tamarind juice. We have our local cherry, it's called acerola. So, you know, different options. So you don't have to stick with the original one, even though some people prefer that one, you know? So, there's a bridge between, I would say a bigger bridge, between Cuba and Puerto Rico, and why we drink the mojito so much. So on 1862, Bacardi Distillery, Bacardi, because you see the last I is accent, so we say Bacardi. Bacardi Distillery was established on Cuba on 1862, in Santiago de Cuba, so this is right here. So even though it was established by a Spanish family, because they started the distillery in Cuba, they take that proudness. So in all their labor says Cuba, made in Cuba. They moved to Puerto Rico in 1936. So the mojito was already created there. And the Bacardi distillery has a slogan, they say, a mojito is not a mojito if it's not done with Bacardi. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people agree with that, right? Oh, yeah. But here comes Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Loud and proud. Your mojito today is done with Ron Don Q. Don Q rum. The name comes from Don Quixote de la Mancha. <laughs> you know, uh, one of my grandfathers, uh, was, he was a big drinker. And he was one of those that he said that Don Q was the best one. So here Bacardi and Don Q, to us, it's kind of like sports. Uh -huh. <laughs> there's the Don Q, there's the Bacardi. Make your mojongo softer. The burning and herbs are gonna help you to make it, to flavor it, para darle sabor. The pork rinds add some texture and flavor as well. But they're optional. If you don't want to add the pork rinds, that's completely fine. If you do want to, I may suggest to drop some now, so that way you do it all at the same time, mix it the flavors and add it the chicharrones, crushing them down. So you want to press them Twist your wrist a little bit. You may give it small hits. You may stand up if you need to. If you want to. The church that we have in the back is called Iglesia San Jose. It's the second oldest church in the New Hemisphere. Um, it was closed for 20 years because it needed to be fixed and it was really hard for the church and well volunteers and everybody got together to be able to fix it up. Um, it has the only samples of uh, alfresco painting from the from the 1500s. So there are many delicate things that needed to be uh, treated with very uh, people that are very specialized with that so it, it took a long time to, to fix it up but finally it is open available to the public um, in the old days always next to the church in the backyard is where you had uh, the cemetery so we are also standing in one of the first cemeteries here of San Juan it is closed it's blessed okay everybody's okay and they open up another uh, cemetery from the city in the middle, we have a statue of Juan Ponce de Leon, the first person that came, that trekked the, the sea, the, the, the island. He became the first governor of Puerto Rico. And uh, this statue is very curious. Uh, for me, two things. Uh, we don't have any drawing or painting of him. He was really busy doing whatever he was doing. So we have no idea how, how he looked like. But, you know, the Spanish thought that probably he looked like that very handsome. <laughs> and the other thing is that this statue is made with canyons that were left by the British. They had attacked here, uh, Puerto Rico, and left. Sometimes the canyons get uh, damaged inside. If you use it one more time, they might explode. So sometimes they do that. They just leave them and the Spanish got those canyons and took them to New York to a foundry and they asked to make uh, this statue and there is another one they made exactly the same just a little bit bigger and it, you can find it in the fort of St. Augustine in 
Florida. Uh, uh, that's the city or the town that he uh, founded in, in the U.S. So, yeah, that's the story of the, of, of the statue. Uh, the street that I have behind is called Calle San Sebastian. So, San Sebastian Street is very famous because there had in here in San Juan the capital city has been celebrating the festival of San Sebastian already for more than 50 years uh, in the old days it was just the the priest will give the mass and after that he will go out and put on like a big head uh, representing different like uh, uh, folk tales and walk around the city and this is a simple simple thing to celebrate uh, that martyr. So right now it's nothing like that. It's a huge party that we do every year, January 20th, and we do it for the for the whole weekend. We still have the big heads, but every plaza becomes uh, a, a place where they have a big stage with different music. Um, and in here is like one of the main places because it's the St. Sebastian Street that everybody comes here. It's like a big carnival. Just to sum it up, I went to make mofongo, then I did a walking tour, and then, you know, I went to a restaurant, I got more mofongo and appetizers and that sort of thing, and check out the sights and sound. It's, Puerto Rico is nice, and San, um, San Juan in particular. Beautiful waters, uh, beautiful architecture, and uh, I would definitely come back if I have a chance. The next two islands are just chill, beachy areas. Hey guys, I am in Tortola, which is a Br British Virgin Isle island. Ready, very pretty here, very pretty. The sea is pretty rough though. Um, I went for a swim and it was pushing me forward and back. But it's a beautiful island, um, nice breeze. If you ever get to, able to go to British uh, Isle, Tortola, British Virgin Isle, Islands, uh, it's really good. You can see I got a tan. It's so relaxing over here. You know, when you're in the Caribbean, when you have water like this, how can you say no, right? It's beautiful. Everyone's enjoying themselves. Again, it's uh, strong waves, but if you know how to swim, you're okay. I got pushed back a little bit. But don't panic. You're good. You know your limitations. The island's pretty small. Um, but from the port, it was like maybe a couple minute drive. I think like eight minute drive to the other side of the island, uh, which is not too bad. They have a shuttle service to take you to this beach. Hey guys, I am at Half Moon K. This is a private island of Holland America. Um, it's located right in the Bahamas. And um, the waves are awesome here. When you like to swim or even float. <laughs> the waves are awesome. And then let me show you uh, how it looks behind me. Blue, aqua blue. It's beautiful here. You can see you can see the ship in the background over there. Over there. And then uh you know, gonna swim a little bit more and then uh get a bite to eat and then I'll see you back soon. Um today's the last day of being in the island. 
and um, tomorrow we're going to be on a sea day and then I'm back at Fort Lauderdale. So near the end of the video I wanted to show you some of the food I had on the ship. Um, it's a good segue to my third and final video. So you can see the menu and everything with what I got. The lamb, really good. Even though it looks very small, it's only an appetizer, guys. Prime rib is awesome. I had a risotto. The risotto is spot on. And the cake. We can say no to cake. Then I wanted to show you tamarind. It's a specialty dining that I had on deck 10. Uh, that I showed in my previous video. It's Asian pan fusion. So I had the barramundi. And I had some mango posset. So it was really good. So until next time. I see you on the next video. Remember to like and subscribe. And I see you all in the next video.